Shazam! Hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome back to our channel here at Underdeveloped. And today we have another movie review for you guys. We've been doing a lot lately. It is to uh, Nora, film directed by Sean Baker. Um, he made um, only saw one of his other movies. It was Tangerine years ago. Thought that was pretty good. Um, I think it was shot on the iPhone too, if I'm not mistaken. Or one of those other films. Oh, um, nice. I think it was that one. I'm not. Don't quote me on that. Maybe you guys could do that research on your own. Or if you already know, you can put in the comments on them. Uh, break down Nora simply. Nora is a sex worker. She works... Weird thing, the, like, because the club that she works in is like a nude bar. Like, um, I've, I've been in one before. Uh, it's called... Um, shit. It's, it's, it's in Toronto. It's in downtown Toronto. It's called Zanzibar. Uh, it's pretty much the same thing. Like girls, they're like pretty much topless. They come to you and you know they flirt with you. They talk to you. They, you know, what I mean, like actually like they actually give a shit about your life. You know, interest almost like a real conversation. And then she asks you want to go to the back, and then you know, what I mean, you take up money or oh, if you have money ready, do a dance. You charge your thing by like the minute. I didn't do it myself. My friend did it. Uh, I did strike a conversation with one, but I definitely didn't close the deal because I wasn't interested in doing that. Really, it was really my thing. Um. But well, those places exist. But from I'm I'm aware, like New York doesn't really have places like that. New York is like mainly strip clubs, but they don't really do nudity. From no, I'm aware, it's not legal here. Like, I did look that up last. I did look up last night, so that's up to date information. Yeah, like, like yeah, like nudity's it. And I already I already knew it because I'm like oh, my dad told me that way long ago, and other people I know as well. Because I'm actually out in the New York City nightlife, and I'm like, now that I go to strip clubs, but like I only went to one. That was because I was working on a. Jocelyn's Cabaret, which is a strip show, so he's in fucking Starlets. That's the only time I've really been to a strip club. Um, but like my uncles, my dad, all of them went to have went to strip clubs uh, before. Um, and I just and from them and from other people I know, because I also have friends and other cousins, whatever else that went to strip clubs and just friends in general. Like basically, I just know a lot of people that went to strip clubs, <laughs> and they from them and my and my pops, whoever else, they told me that that's not really a thing out here. Like that's not you know what I mean like so from that. And top of what this niggas gave me, it's like it's like hundred percent like no way in hell <laughs> that New York, <laughs> like this is completely illegal. Like this, like, this place is like an official place in the city too, with the whole name and everything. It's called um, but it's not a sexy name. It's called like some fucking they call it headquarters. Headquarters, yeah. yeah. So maybe that's because they think it's like it's a front. <laughs> I don't know, but I don't think so. That seems like a real establishment. Yeah, if it is, that's a very poorly disguised front. <laughs> so, uh, Nora, um, what do you think? I think this movie was overall a really good package, but I think it did really take a while to get to the, the better parts of the movie. Uh, we had a, kind of a slow start with the relationship building up between Anora and Ivan. And, I, I mean, it's not bad or anything. It's fine. It's just more of them just partying and fucking and just ding out while he's playing games. Which, it's fine, but it gets kind of old. But the movie really, really picks up once the henchmen arrive. Because it is like, they're just so funny. Especially when Torres gets there, he gets so fucking in himself. Like, his boomer, his crazy boomer ass is just so funny and it's the driving point of so much that happens in this movie. Yeah. I feel like that's when the movie really begins to pick up, and that's like 40, 50 minutes into the movie. <clears throat> yeah, so I've been talking to other friends about this movie, and um, it's kind of broken down like this. Like, the first half of the movie is the fairy tale. That's the montage of them constantly fucking and hanging out and living a livy the loca and then the next half is the reality setting in it's a lot more grim it's a lot more like um it's more realistic like the whole fantasy is dropped now we're in blunt reality and we all have to deal with the outcomes um and it's pretty much the whole like where i see this pretty the way i see it is like it's pretty much a whole flip on its head of the cinderella pretty woman narrative you know what i mean yeah like it's that's the fantasy we want to buy into, but this movie's like no, we're kind of flipping that on its ass. Like that's, that's mm -hmm. all bullshit. That's not we're not you know what I mean yeah it's not a thing. That's definitely um, the goal. It, it's movie. it's not reality. You know what I mean, and I respect that. That's going against the grain again, because we already got the pretty one. We don't need another one. Now we're getting like the real the realistic Disney princess love story. It's not that way. You know what I mean? Um, and I, I like that. Uh, the first four minutes to me, I agree to to a certain level because even though I see the vision of the movie what it was going for, I get it, a lot of it was intentional. Doesn't mean I liked it. Uh, I don't think we need to see 40, 50 plus minutes of a montage of them constantly fucking and 
and playing playing video games and them partying and doing drugs and doing whatever. Yeah. Like I don't mind seeing it. I don't mind seeing that that part of it. But it felt like it was just that, and the narrative almost went away. And it's just them just constantly fucking around and yeah. and having fun. Like I get it. They're they're having fun. I don't need to see like ten thousand scenes of them doing the same. You know what I mean? Like yeah. a, a, a repetition. A lot of, of should just been cut. Re- re- repetition. <laughs> a montage of just constant re- repetition of them just partying. It's like a cycle, and I get it. It's intentional. Just as a viewing experience, it's just not fun. It's like mm-hmm. all right, I get the point. Let's move on i don't need to see his ass in the air humping her again yeah you know what i mean like they could have gone the point cross while cutting out a good chunk of that part of the movie i agree like the point has been made you know what i mean like don't get me wrong it's still a good movie like you know what i mean so oh, it's like you obviously did a good job it's just yeah but it's a viewing experience like you i feel you should really drag on i guess it's intentional but it's like still it doesn't translate like even no one sometimes doesn't come off with this you know what i mean just sometimes directors don't really land all the time yeah, it's not really. Yeah, it's yeah. not really a speaking of yeah. whether of quality of director. Like yeah. even the best can do it. But you have to care about like how audiences perceive. It's just not all about you. You know, I mean, remember you are making a movie for people to watch. That's how you make money. That's how we keep this a business. Mm-hmm. And I and I'm sorry, it's a viewing experience. At least, like I, I was just dragged on, son. Don't get me wrong. It's enough entertaining moments to keep me invested, and it's going to be still good. But I swear, to God, bro, if you just act up like twenty minutes of excess shit. Especially from the beginning. You know what I mean? Like, I felt it kind of dragged on too, like when Toros came in the shot. Like, I felt like the whole house scene with him, her, and the goons, you know what I mean, trying to capture, I felt that really dragged on for, that could have been shaved off a little bit. You know Probably, what I mean? Yeah. Like, and even chasing them kind of, I felt kind of like they could have, like, the whole movie I felt just could have been tighter. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like, um, just all the movie really needed to be perfect was just chop off a little here and there, a little here and there to bring it tighter. Just a little less. Yeah. And we would have been, you know what I'm saying? Because, I mean, the, all the performances were terrific. Oh, definitely. I mean, They're everybody fantastic. knocked it out the fucking park. Besides Mikey's accent, that was, I was more of a director's choice and his lack of, like, um, had his 90s idea of what the city was. Maybe she's some Latina in the Bronx. I don't know. But, like, she's not. She's this Russian girl from, this half Russian girl from uh, from Brooklyn. You know what I mean? Like, like I don't really, you know what I mean? It's kind of like, but... As I said, it's a nitpick, but other than, outside of that, it still was a fairly decent accent. It just exaggerated. It's like most stereotypical. Um, but even though she still did good, performance was still good. She kicked ass. Same as the kid. The kid really gave me fucking, like, I'm just a young motherfucker trying to have fun. But then when his mom came to the picture, he got a little emotional. Like, it it wasn't over the top. It was just the right amount of drama. You know what I mean? And it's just, it was just rightly acting. Like he really played a, a fucking knucklehead. You know what I mean? Like, and it worked. And the goons, the goons, I felt the one who played Garnet was a little annoying, but that was really more of a character thing than yeah. him. I felt he really landed a lot of com- comedic, because they were almost pretty much com- comic relief. Oh, they definitely And then were. they had the comedy about him, which is a lot more stoic, don't know really what the fuck is going on. Not really involved, just find himself in this in this situation, but... Yeah, he's just kind of stuck here now, and that's where the humor of him comes yeah, from. Yeah, yeah, but he landed that, that low, that deadpan kind of style. And of course, I mean, Toros had me cracking up in the theater. I mean, laughing out loud. Same. Toros had me laughing out loud in the theater. Just dying, like dying laughing. Me and Nick. He was fucking funny as hell. He was hilarious. And it, it felt hyper realistic. It wasn't like, he wasn't trying to force anything. It just created itself because it's a realistic predicament that anybody in a position will find themselves in. The drama creates itself like a baby woman, old school, like, like you know what I mean? Like, uh, 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 oh. Yeah, I, I'm sure we've all met like a million Tauruses in our lives. We all have like yeah. that one member of the family, the older man who's out of touch with reality, who's like kind of entitled and no. very pushy. And he's obviously an older parent, you know what I mean? And he works for a conservative, very wealthy family. And this will obviously put him, you know what I mean, on the outs, which is the place he does want to be. And watching over Ivan was his responsibility. So him doing something so reckless under his watch, you know what I mean? The, the, the pressure and the stress and the annoyance just come so natural to him. And he played it off so well and so natural. Oh, he fucking did. You know what I mean? Like, because it's, it's so realistic. It's such an understandable. That's exa- that's the way he expects to react. That makes sense. You know what I mean? So when we saw it, especially the moment where he realized that, when he saw the picture of the girl that he married, he's like, ugh. And it's like, we all, yeah, I get it. Trust me, I, I completely understand. <laughs> like, it totally makes sense. I knew he was going to act like that. What, what else would you be? You know what I mean? Um, and then, yeah, and then him, and this is him talking to Nora because he is part of the second, he is the big part. He's pretty much the person who 
commissions the whole second half. Like he creates all the drama for the second half because he's the one that's like, "Yo, we're gonna get this to no, we're gonna end this one time." And 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 Nora's like, "No, what are you talking about? We we love we, lo- we love each other." He's like, "No, you're not." And he is also in a little arbit. He's kind of an arbiter of the truth. Like, like he's kind of, he's kind of, yeah, to an extent, because he's like, because he's, because, he, I mean, when it comes to them two, he's pretty much mostly right, because. He sees through their bullshit. Their, yeah. yeah, he sees right through their crap. Like, it's like, you're not in love, he's not in love with you, this is like, you both got it fucked up, because this movie didn't really even set you up to try to make you think that they were actually going to be in love. No, not really. I never really thought that they were. Yeah. yeah, but the thing about it, you think that, like, but the, but the tropes still are in play you know what i mean like two people from different worlds kind of fall in love but no nah, they're, they're obviously getting into it in a realistic sense they're getting into it for the wrong reasons for very self for self centered reasons on both parts not just anor it's on him too because okay. he needs his basically a green card marriage and he's just trying to have fun and escape his responsibilities he just wanted to piss off his parents and, and also on top yeah also piss off his parents all in one because he doesn't want to go work with him he doesn't like what they do but he's very happy to profit off of to have fun on their dime you know what i mean that's the bullshit, and you know we all pretty much been like that. Very, you know, I mean, uh, we we kind of like that with our parents, especially if they're successful. We're happy to use their money, but we talk shit about them. You know, what I mean, like it's it's a common fucking trope with all of us. It's not really a love story. It's more about this young kids, um, young kids being stupid, honestly, just making dumb decisions and not really, and just trying to find a place in the world. You know, um, yeah, yeah, pretty much because they're not really getting into it for love. They're more getting into it for their own. Re- reasons yeah. like she like because there's like a huge there's a huge duality between like her two lifestyles and Nora like she's like all fronts it's, it's a performance when she's in the club she's almost a whole different person you know what I mean she's this sexy seductress that's talking to all these men and getting all this money whatever else but then when she leaves she just like when she wears the normal clothes she's just this regular chick that wears this like real distressed look like she's very unhappy and obviously not in the best situation yeah. obviously been through the ringer in her fucking life you know what i mean she's just a normal chick just just scared and just trying to figure it out you know what i mean and just mm-hmm. unhappy you know what i mean like you know and she goes into work and now and she's and she chooses and she rather choose to live in this fantasy that she's built you know what i mean this oh, per, almost this almost this persona you know what i mean because yeah. really two different people you know what i mean when she's home and she's at work so it's like she way that's why she leaves she'd rather live she had to just go deeper into this fantasy because reality sucks mm-hmm. you know what i mean but then reality kind of hits her over the head and she has no choice but to deal with it and she really can't deal with it which really what makes the ending work so well because when she's really faced with the reality and the truth she actually gains a certain level of maturity and appreciation you know what i mean yeah my only big problem is that they could just shave yeah basically shave on the edges tighter. a little bit yeah just so make a little, the, trim a little bit of the fat trim a little bit of the fat and make the movie tighter it'd have been damn near perfect yeah <clears throat> so i say so i, I think, think it's, it's time for scores do you have anything else to add it's, no i think we're time for scores um, I'm giving, but I'll say 92. I'm just thinking more of an 88. 88? Okay. Yeah. Because, okay. like, I really wasn't, like, super overwhelmed with, like, anything the first, like, 40, 50 minutes. I mean, I like the 40, 50 minutes. I just feel this, as I said, fun. it should have been tighter. Because I do get the whole thing. Like, the first half is fairy tale, second half is the. Yeah. Coming off the fucking high. No, I totally you know understand I mean? like, that too. As that I don't agree that it needed to be the entire first half. I think it could have been like you could have accomplished all that and then some in much less time. But I, I think it equally needs to, not equally, but I think it could have been shaved off all around. But even though well acted, well directed, entertaining shit, a fun ass ride, and overall it land it stuck the landing, so I think it deserves in the nineties for sure. But if they just made the movie a little bit tight, like twenty, thirty minutes tighter the movie could have been a 97, probably. <laughs> I agree with that statement, yeah. So, yeah, that's my score. So, Nick, 88, I'm 92. Mm-hmm. So, definitely give us a look out in theaters. Definitely. It's give worth, it a shot. worth a look. It's been getting raving reviews. It's been crushing it. So, yeah, man, support good movies. Mm-hmm. Go to your theater, go to your local theater, watch something good, and this is definitely something good you might consider watching. Absolutely. Later, guys. Like, subscribe, y'all. We'll see you next time.